in honor of the gospel and as you are able, please stand. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were surprised. Where did this man get all of this? What's this wisdom he's been given? What about the powerful acts accomplished through him? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? They were repulsed by him and fell into sin. Jesus said to them, Prophets are honored everywhere except in their own hometowns, among their relatives, and in their own households. He was unable to do any miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and then healed them. He was appalled by their disbelief. Then Jesus traveled through the surrounding villages teaching. He called for the 12 and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no bread, no bags, and no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave that place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. You know, um, a month or so ago, I was serving as staff liturgist, and I was sitting with my friend Kevin over here, where winter is now. And um, I don't know, the service had been proceeding, and maybe I was moving around a little bit in my chair, and my stole must have slipped a little bit to my shoulder. These deacon stoles, stoles, they're, stoles, they're, you know, a little more difficult to handle, I think. But it slipped off a little bit, and so it was time to stand up, and I stood up, and it dropped right down to the floor. Now, I got to tell you, it felt a little bit like my pants falling down. I mean, that was uncomfortable. You know, God tries to move us out of our comfort zone, and uh, that's really a, a wonderful blessing. I don't uh, have the opportunity to preach all too often, but sometimes it's uh, with the First Church uh, of United, United, First United Methodist Church in Washington, Missouri, occasionally in the chapel, and now the gift of being here. It's a wonderful thing. I think that uh, sometimes we don't realize that our cup is filling until it starts spilling out on our hand. And I think that God does that for us in our service to him. Let's begin with a prayer. God, we know that you love us in a pure and eternal way. Because we are so loved, you gifted us with the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You gifted us with special talents. Talents we're called to use. And when we use them and share them, we find wholeness. We find ourselves. And we find our purpose in Christ's work in the world. Amen. So I was asked to think of the most important message to leave behind if this were my last opportunity to share a story. I see this as leaving sort of a spiritual legacy, I guess, if you will, a personal perspective on what's important in my life or in my ministry. So I've been praying and reading, but mainly I've been waiting. I've been waiting for God's voice in this process of discernment about what I feel most compelled to share with you. And waiting certainly isn't easy, but I've come to count on it. God is there. We have to wait and listen. Finally, when I um, wasn't thinking about this at all, I bumped into a quote from 
an unlikely source, I think, for this sermon. 1960s rock artist Janis Joplin. (laughs) Now, you may remember that Janis uh, gifted us with a prayerful song in which she asked God for a Mercedes Benz. (laughs) I'm just glad she lifted up God, you know. But seriously, she said something I think that was profound, at least for me. She said, you know, I can talk about music because I'm inside of it, followed by a challenge. And she said, what is it that you can talk about that you're inside of? I love questions like this that cause a person to stop and think and see. And this is especially helpful in those moments when we've been struggling to find our way, find our way through shadows and challenges of life. It's like those times when we've been searching for an answer or we've just been too busy to think clearly And then bam, someone asks a good question and light fills the darkness. We're able to stop our hesitant walk through darkness and the dark places in our lives and and we're able to focus. We're able to focus and, and, and stop thinking just about stubbing our toe, right? We're able to see down a wide open road. We can see our own horizon. We can see inside ourselves. Interesting to think about the horizon being inside ourselves. But isn't it the thing that we all strive to do? It's that ongoing process in life to know what it is we should be doing, know where it is we should be going. And it's in that moment of clarity that we understand the truth that's been eluding us. One type of very important truth to know, as well as we can, is who we are. When we know a little better about who we are, we can more closely discover our purpose in life. The two go together, really, truth and purpose. And when we finally discover the treasure of truth that's been gifted to us, we can better understand our purpose, whether it's large or small, whether it's some big, you know, global sort of issue, or if it's Uh, a, a purpose of comforting a child in the nursery. All of these things are important, and they lead us to our true selves. For me, the treasure of truth is, is received through the grace of Jesus and nurtured over time by the power and companionship of the Holy Spirit. And I think it's fair to say the partnership of the Holy Spirit. That's gifts, Jesus' gift to us is to and promise that we are never alone. We are in partnership. And it's in that moment of discovery that we at last understand the joy of life. We find our way with an abiding peace and confidence and clarity. And this is God's wish for us, that we know who we are, that we know we all have a purpose, that we know we're part of something beautiful as children of God and as members of the family of God. And it's in that knowledge that we find ourselves better able to live without fear. You know, there are many things that I enjoy doing, but there's a few things that I really find myself inside of. And one of the things that takes me to a place of feeling of wholeness is oil painting, the art of plein air oil painting. Plein air is a a French term, which just it means plain air or open air. This is the art of painting in the freedom of the great outdoors where gnats love to land in the middle of your canvas (laughs) just as you're putting on the finishing touches. And that storm that's been looming on the horizon, it's about ready to pour out. No pressure. Just got to finish it up real quickly here. But even with those challenges, when I'm in the middle of God's creation, especially in the community of other artists, trying to chase the light, as we say, and capture color and put it on canvas in a way that tells the story of that moment and maybe illustrates the magic of God's natural gifts to the world. That's when I'm lost inside it and I'm found at the same time. The reason is is because I'm being who God made me to be. And this is one of the times that I feel the love and assurance of the living Christ 
who whispers the call to go and share this discovery of truth with others so that you and their friends will find their joy and know eternal hope that comes from knowing, as Jesus would say, they're in me and I'm in them. Our scripture lesson for today describes a time when Jesus was well into the place that his father had called him to be. He was healing and teaching in ways that were transforming lives and in ways, ways that caused the cynical and the fearful to push back on him and criticize and judge and plot against him. But you know, that's the beauty of being inside what you know and you love best. When you're in that zone of completeness, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. Jesus said, I am the Father and the Father is in me. He could rise above the dust of the critics around him and shake them off and move to people with eyes to see and ears to hear, to do what they're called to do and to be in the thick of this beautiful art of living. So Jesus sent the apostles out in pairs, two at a time in community. He sent them out to use their gifts in ways that would heal and inspire others to find their place in the kingdom so that they too could go out and show others how to feel the peace that surpasses everyday human concerns, concerns that pale in the presence of the eternal love of God who guards our hearts and minds. There is no doubt that God created humanity to be united in happy companionship, not divisive separation and loneliness. Companionship so that both God and human beings might share the joy of the community of love. Jesus said, happy are the peacemakers. Making peace builds up the community. It builds the family of God, the children of God. Happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. Community naturally includes activity. Activity that the church world calls mission. And activities like connecting people with other people, building homes for the homeless, growing and sharing food with the hungry, caring for others in need, our family, our friends and the poor, celebrating the joy of life at the end of the day and like we are now on the Sabbath. God's noble purpose for humanity is to make disciples of Christ so that we might live more completely in a world of peace and love. This is our mission and purpose. We're inside of it, so we're moved to talk about it as we live it out in this walk of life. Recently, the United Methodist News Service published um, a story about the Rio, Texas conference, who is very much living inside the mission of Christ. The Rio, Texas conference approved on June 9th a resolution requesting the Justice Department, quote, immediately discontinue separating children from their families due to the zero tolerance policy. The Rio conference, along with us all, as is inside of God's call and boldly talking about the needs of others by advocating for refugees who are seeking asylum from the physical, social, and economic violence in their countries. As someone who has spent some time uh, with mission trips in Nicaragua, Nicaragua, I can tell you that even when there isn't political violence or gang violence, life for the lion's share of the people in those Central American countries is very, very difficult. As United Methodists, we are a church that is inside of advocating and working for justice by lending our voice and our talents and our resources to help make a place that welcomes little children to a safe home, just as Jesus was welcomed in Nazareth when his parents with him fled they fled from Israel to find safety from Herod, the son of Herod, who would threaten his wife. Friends, we are called to bring wholeness and beauty to life. 
We're called to build up the family of God in the love of Christ. We're called to paint a picture of history that will inspire and expand the kingdom of God. Anything that doesn't add to this picture, anything that breaks down the spirit of a child is a barrier to God's purpose and dream for us. I'm proud of the work of the people of this church. Work like mission teams for bikes and habitat homes and trips to places outside of Missouri like Puerto Rico that involve lifting up and helping others who are suffering from the storms of life while sharing the good news of Christ. I'm inspired by the work of Children's Sunday School, Playground, so many programs with children that they're just simply amazing. I'm inspired by small groups of young adults on the south side of the inner city who are doing great and innovative things. I'm inspired by faithful adult Sunday school groups who are here every week. Ash Wednesday service in a parking lot down the street. Friends supporting friends and hopefully new friends over a cup of coffee and a donut here in Fellowship Hall. I am thankful, as your church administrator, I am thankful for this facility, this house of God that makes a safe place for people when their homes have been flooded, when it's too hot to stay at home, and for our community of brothers and sisters who are still looking for their gifts, this is a place for them so that they too will find peace and hope and love in Christ, so that they too can join the tradition of love in service that is the heart of ministry through Manchester United Methodist Church. Let us lift up this family of God. Let us give it our all, our prayers, you know these words, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. You can say that with me. Our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Thank you. We are standing in the, mutil, in the middle of a beautiful canvas that tells the story of life. And we continue as God's artists. Putting the finishing touches on this canvas is something that is ongoing, isn't it? And yes, there may be a gnat or two that lands in the middle of it, but that's the beauty of creation that adds texture. So we love all that becomes a part of this beautiful ministry, this gift of God that is truth and purpose. You are called, my friends. Be brave in your faith. Be thoughtful. Be good stewards of the gifts you've been given and love all God's people, even the ones that don't love you back. And I think especially the ones that don't love you back. Find the special thing that God gave you to share, that thing that you're inside of. Lose yourself in it and find your way to the place God called you to be, doing what God called you to do. Amen.